I'm joined by Harry Littman of the Talking Feds YouTube channel and the Talking Feds podcast. Harry, the biggest news that dropped on Friday, I think, was Justice Mershon and the Manhattan District Attorney criminal case where Donald Trump's already been convicted on 34 separate felony counts, where sentencing was scheduled for September 18th, where Justice Mershon was going to rule on the issues of absolute immunity following the United States Supreme Court's ruling. That ruling by Mershon was supposed to be handed down on or around September 16th. And Justice Mershon said that he would be adjourning the sentencing until November, until after the election. But Justice Mershon very expressly mentioned the reason that he was doing it was because the proximity to the election. He said this is a unique situ situation that stands alone in uh, really no other historical precedent. He chided the Manhattan District Attorney's Office for not taking a firm position and trying to kind of toss it and make it Justice Mershon's decision to make. And Justin Mershon said, look, DA, your no position was a position to me. And by you acknowledging that because of the Supreme Court's decision, finding that there's this concept of absolute immunity broadly, that no matter what I rule, Donald Trump can take out an immediate emergency interlocutory appeal before the sentencing anyway, which would kind of derail it. So even if I push back now my schedule by a week or two weeks to try to deal with and anticipate Trump's appeal, Justice Mershon says that makes it very close to the election. And he said, I don't even want the appearance of impropriety. He goes, there's no impropriety at all. All of the allegations and accusations by Trump against me are beyond frivolous, but I don't even want the appearance of impropriety. So I'm moving this to November. On a previous hot take I did with Karen Friedman Agnifilo, she's of course the former number two at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, I said, it does kind of feel like he got a little bit bullied by the MAGAs suing him and suing his daughter and the, the, the MAGA Republicans in the House of Representatives subpoena, doing the subpoenas, and he wanted to kind of push it. But I've heard two schools of thought, so I want to hear what you think. On the one hand, there are some people who say justice delayed is justice denied. You should treat this like any other case, what are you? why are you treating him differently? You're saying that this is different and he's above the law. And I've heard other people say, you know what, it's probably a good thing so that Donald Trump can't be a martyr before the election and whine and complain. Look how unfairly I've been treated and fundraise off it. And now Donald Trump gets to be asked questions like, what do you think about child care where he can't even string a sentence together, um, yet alone address it? So, Harry, where do you side on that? And, and what do you think about this ruling? Yeah, look, I thought it was remarkable. I could see why it was a close call. And it's for the reasons you're saying, Ben, on the one hand, just go one foot in front of the other. On the other hand, thinking about, you know, he was like, it was a strange opinion where he was almost tortured and, you know, Hamlet like talking to himself, what should I do, et cetera. And your point about the DA is really, I think, vital. And there may be second guessing there. I don't know why the DA they were weenies, in my view, not to say go. they have a very strong position. It's the position that has prevailed in courts generally, even as we've been thinking about November and the country has. The, the courts have mainly said that's not our business. And just yesterday, Judge Chutkin, when finally uh, Trump's lawyer was pushed in front of her to say it's the election, stupid, she said, oh, no, it isn't. What I've got in front of me is a four count criminal indictment. I'm not thinking about the election. So that would have been a very kind of straightforward path for Merchan to take. On the other hand, this is the simpler one. It keeps him out of trouble. And there is this point, you just raised it. It's an important uh, point that uh, Trump still had arrows in his quiver and he could have, even if Merchan had kept it on the 18th, tried to move it, maybe gotten it to his warm uh, uh, re receivers on the U.S. Supreme Court and, and halted the proceedings anyway. And Merchan would rather he do it than he be sort of forced to it. But this is the of all the, every single case, Ben, uh, that uh, all the criminal cases, and now 
None of them come to anything except the New York criminal convictions. All of them have been flirting with this idea, but have not come out and said it or been uh, much less have their decisions dictated by it. This is the first time you have a judge and I was at the at the court for the entire trial and he absolutely played it the other way. We're going down the straight and narrow like any other criminal case. This guy blinked and you can understand it, uh, but it was uh, noteworthy. And as you say, big victory for Trump, who's been trying very hard, actually put it right out there and said, I would get irreparable reputational harm. Remember when those convictions first happened in New York, his poll numbers suffered a little, so it could it could matter here. He was trying everything, uh, you know, th throwing all kinds of motions to be there. And yeah, Merchan let him do it. And I think uh, a lot of it had to do, with, just as you say, the DA, he said they didn't take a position, but he actually interpreted that at, between the lines, as he put it, as being a pro uh, put off the sentencing uh, position. And, you know, in these cases, a judge needs a DA to, to back her or him up and give him steel in the spine. And the DA wasn't there for that left Mayor Chun hanging. And he said, OK, screw it. I'm, I'll see you, see you in uh, November. Justice Merchan made clear, look, I've moved this case along efficiently expeditiously and at all times I followed the facts and I followed the law, we would already be far past sentencing by now if it weren't for the United States Supreme Court creating a new legal doctrine that I now have to deal with. And so, you know, while I've seen in the comment section people saying this judge screwed up, people are very angry at Justice Mershon, what Justice Mershon's kind of coded message to the public, though, was is the United States Supreme Court has these Trump appointees. They've created an entirely new legal precedent. If I were to go forward and make a ruling and determine, and almost he hinted that this is where he was going to go, Right. That Trump Very would not point. be yeah. entitled to absolute immunity because hush money payments are not subject to any type of official conduct or core constitutional function. He said, then play it out with me. That would then leave sentencing in two days. So then assume Donald Trump, you know, did an interlocutory appeal um, that would no matter what move the sentencing date back, it would automatically cause a pause because he's entitled now under New York law to get this interlocutory appeal because it deals with a doctrine of immunity. So he said, look, on the one hand, let's just assume I build in and I, I build in an extra week or two weeks. That's going to mean you're asking me to make this decision, the sentencing, like literally right as votes are being cast at that point in time. And he's like, that's scheduling at, for me as a judge. I can just deal with this, you know, in a more organized way of pushing this until November. And the bottom line is the other message to the extent there's silver lining here is I think that if and when, just if Trump loses the election, I think there's going to be a serious sentence. Like th th there will be nothing potentially holding it back, you know, and I think yeah. I, it goes on the uh, no, high end of the sentencing scale. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, in theory, all these things, uh, sh you know, he should he should set to one side. And he has been a pretty, I would say, exemplary jurist all the way through. That's why this comes as uh, as a mild surprise. But the the, you know, D.A., kind of hung him out there. Is he going to be the only one? And as you say, there were different maneuvers. They get really pretty tangled up. But imagine, think what happens like in, the, in a death penalty case and at the very you know final rush to the Supreme Court. They had timed it or they would have tried to time it that so that the Supreme Court would uh, potentially impose a stay 
just when the 18th was coming, which would force rescheduling and probably put it past the election anyway. I'm not saying he was thinking in these terms, but possibly one thing on his mind was, I don't want to be slapped around by the U.S. Supreme Court and made to have to stop and start and look impotent. You know what? I'll just uh, let uh, discretion be the better part of valor here. I'll put the thing off myself. It's probably going to happen anyway. I do think, though, that had the DA come out and said, no, sends him, it's a normal case. That would have been consistent with how he'd acted so far. And I do think also it's a significant win for Trump. If you think about it now, Ben, ex other than the convictions in this case, Trump faces no consequences before the election, right? The immunity case is, is hijacked by the Supreme Court. Uh, Fulton County, you know, goes moribund after Fonnie Willis's uh, missteps. And Eileen Cannon does her uh, mischief in Mar-a-Lago. And now this. So really, there's, you know, everything that's going to play out, if it's going to play out, will be after the election. Uh, as we talked about yesterday, even the January 6th case would probably be put off a long time. So if he loses, uh, you know, justice, I think, will be severe, not necessarily swift, though. And if he wins, everything gets very tricky very quickly. You know, I always believe, though, that sometimes Donald Trump, not sometimes, mostly all of the time, is a good counter indicator when he says <laughs> something's going good, it's going yeah. bad. And yeah. You know, per, per, perhaps the strategy for him, just seeing how corporate media didn't give a crap if he was found liable for sexual assault, whatever, it's Trump, that's what we yeah. expect of him, convicted felon, whatever. Yeah, he asked, did he did he take a little bit of a hit in the poll? Yeah. I, 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 marginal, minimal, nothing massive, you know, based on how the corporate media framed these issues, and yeah. I think how they've kind of discussed it and dialogued with it. Heck, after E. Jean Carroll's trial, where he was found liable of sexually assaulting her, CNN said, come on in, welcome, and let's have all you, ma let's surround yeah. you by MAGAs, then you could defame her again on our airwaves. I mean, Which you know, did. come on. Yeah, it does seem maybe like it's all baked in and he does terrible. He's at 42 and a quarter. He does great. He's at 42.25%. It's just, you know, that it's ev everything... Uh, you know, it's an interesting dynamic in the election now because very, very, very few people have not made up their minds about. Yeah, and look, he about. stayed. He stayed relative. I mean, not, not disciplined, but at these trials, he'd have yep. his three or four words. When yep. it was Angoran, he would lie and say the judge valued Mar-a-Lago at twenty-seven million. Right, right. The judge, you know, the judge, you know, is taking his shirt off. The judge, this, the judge's daughter. Or, or I think there was the wife, uh, the wife of the judge or something, you know, yeah, with, yeah, with Justice right, yeah. Merchant. He has his yeah. points. Then there's no cameras in the court. So all you see is him in these press conferences. And now when he's asked questions, though, about topics, child care, what do you think That's about right. it? He has to answer questions. So, you know, it's a, it's a good discussion. I, I think ultimately, you know, it's it's disappointing to see, and it's an understatement, that the justice system – um, Benz. Yeah. Benz. Yeah, exactly. Make sure you subscribe to the Talking Feds YouTube channel. Um, it's where I get my legal news. They're on their way to half a million subscribers. Subscribe now. Harry Littman. Again, just search Talking Feds on YouTube. Thanks. Real quick, Meta just changed their algorithm to suppress political content. Please follow our Instagram at Midas Touch right now as we head towards 400,000 followers so you don't miss a beat.